Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on our webinar on Green Monkey, our landfill biodegradable gloves. I am Laura Whitlock, the Director of Marketing and Innovation of Watson Gloves. And today we also have on the line Paul Whiteman. He is the Vice President of Business Development at Enzo Plastics. If you please have any questions, enter them into the question box on your dashboard and we'll an answer some of them at the end of our presentation. So let's get started. So did you know that a paper towel takes two to four weeks to degrade? A banana peel takes three to four weeks to degrade? A plastic bag takes 200 to 1,000 years to degrade? And a nitrile disposable glove takes 200 plus years to degrade? So this is one of the reasons why we developed our Green Monkey Landfill Biodegradable Disposable Gloves. As you know, Grease Monkey is our number one selling brand at Watson's, and we wanted to leverage and grow as well as innovate a category where we are really known for. We are excited to launch our Green Monkey Gloves. This is the 4 mil nitrile, landfill biodegradable, lightly textured finish. AQL is 1.5. It has a, full, has a rolled cuff. It offers 100 gloves per dispenser and is available in sizes small to double extra large. So I'm just going to pass it over to Paul now who will talk about the green initiatives. Thank you, Laura. Today, Green Monkey is closing the loop on sustainability through waste to energy by ensuring the highest recovery value of its gloves after consumer use. Now, you hear a lot about the circular economy, and, and, and the basic principle of the circular economy of that theory is to account for every aspect of an application to ensure the, its highest return value through the entire life cycle. And it's about using the resources and infrastructures we have in place and available today to do that. And that's what Green Monkey provides. By making sure performance of this glove coincides with the primary managed waste system that consumers are going to discard this glove into, Green Monkey crosses off the environmental objectives. Everything that's supposed to be done is being done. It's about reducing landfill airspace. It's about reducing green, greenhouse gas emissions and lowering the carbon footprint. It's about ensuring recycling through energy recovery. Before it was a glove, before it was nitrile, it was energy. And making sure it returns as an energy resource closes that circle. And ultimately, it's about eliminating green monkey gloves from becoming a, a pollutant. Now, pollution and renewable energy are two major issues the world's facing, and Green Monkey is addressing those issues head on by taking a life cycle analysis approach in its design. Now, this is a sustainability strategy that's based on facts, data, and science. Using the EPA's data, we know that 89% of U.S. municipal solid waste ends up in anaerobically managed waste facilities that are managing methane, and 80% of them are recovering energy. Landfill gas to energy is one of the least expensive, most reliable forms of alternative energy. It's available 24-7, 365, rain or shine, wind or no wind. It provides heat for homes, fuel for vehicles, and power to industries. Now, the biodegradation process is simple because there's no need to change consumer behavior. There's no behavior modification that needs to be done. Nothing changes. All the consumer really needs to do is to make sure that they don't litter the glove. The rest is in, de in the design. The additive material attracts specific microbes that are found in our waste environments. And these microbes colonize on the application and they excrete enzymes that break down the polymer chain in order to get to the carbon backbone of the polymer. That is the microbes food source. And what's left over are the natural components, which are soil, air or gases and water. Today's modern landfills, as, ma as mentioned before, the vast majority of today's waste enters landfills that are capturing the methane production and converting it to energy and fuel, about 90%. So the capture rate 
is far better than any other managed system we have. So scale and practice are on our side. We no longer simply bury trash any, anymore. Today's landfills are active systems. These are highly regulated environments that are strictly managed. Protecting the environment and ensuring energy recovery is established in design. The biogas is collected and processed as liquid gas, gaseous fuel, and direct conversion to electricity. In fact, according to the EPA's 2015 data, landfill gas energy product, uh, projects produce enough energy to power nearly 1.2 million homes for a year and heat more than 731,000 homes annually. So what is biogas? Biogas is simply a mixture of different gases produced by the breakdown of organic matter. This does occur in the open environment, but it also occurs in our anaerobic waste systems, systems without oxygen. But biogas is produced through various means as you see here. The biogas being produced are carbon dioxide and methane, and these are the endpoints of microbial biodegradation the byproduct of their food source, the carbon backbone that I just me mentioned a minute ago. And we, in turn, take those gases and convert them into a renewable energy resource. As mentioned a number of times, this is absolutely a landfill biodegradable solution. You may be asked if it's a compostable, if it meets compostability standards. No, it does not. It would be highly unlikely that any glove would ever be disposed of into a compost. So making it work in that type of environment would be sort of pointless. Also, monkey gloves are truly biodegradable. As mentioned, it's through a microbial process that this breakdown occurs. It is not designed to break into smaller pieces. That technology would be considered an oxodegradable technology. This technology is a true biodegradable solution. Uh, the testing standards that we use, um, the main testing standards we use to validate the performance of landfill biodegradation is ASTM D5526. And we also use biomethane potential, but ASTM D5526 is an internationally recognized test standard for determining anaerobic biodegradation of plastic materials under accelerated landfill conditions. This is the primary test that biodegradation timeframes should be based on. Now in landfills, moisture is a critical factor to how fast materials will biodegrade. However, in landfills, moisture will also vary depending on the region of the landfill design. So for this purpose, um, ASTM D5526 is a very robust test and is performed at three different moisture levels representing a very dry landfill that you'd find in a desert region, a very wet landfill that you'd find in a tropical region and moderately moist landfills, which would be the average moisture rate across various landfills. And this test is meant to replicate the environment of a landfill as closely as possible and give more realistic biodegradation rates than other landfill tests. We also use the biomethane potential test, and this is a short-term test that, that provides the um, that's used in, in research in academia worldwide to study the biodegradation of materials in a landfill. The BMP uses optimal conditions to try to um, make the bio, uh, biodegradation of materials happen quickly as possible. So the BMP test is meant to determine if the material will biodegrade in the landfill, but not exactly how fast the material will biodegrade. For that, we, we rely on ASTM D5526. So for the biodegradation times, a qualified landfill biodegradable claim would be ASTM D5526 shows up to 26.5% biodegradation in 390 days. As I just mentioned, this test is conducted at three moisture levels and extrapolating that data Biodegradation is probably going to happen within about a 10-year period, and, and this time frame is ideal for what we're trying to accomplish.
in the market, um, you'll hear a lot about uh, biodegradation. People like to use the word biodegradation, but very few people know where and why that process needs to happen. Biodegradation needs to be a managed process. If a material converts to biogas too quickly, it becomes a greenhouse gas and it will be wasted. Similarly, if it takes too long, the biogas then is released and is wasted as well. So um, in a landfill, that managed time frame is between two to 50, sometimes two to 75 years that that landfill is managing that methane. As long as that biodegradation time is happening within that managed waste environment, we're achieving the results that need to be achieved. Again, there's not much to say here uh, because nothing really changes. Shelf life, texture, appearance, everything remains exactly the same. Monkey Glove is just simply better for the environment and provides greater returns at the end of its life. Now some tips on engaging in, in the, the conversation about sustainability. Definitely want to stick to the facts and data. Um, focus on why the action is being taken, not so much the science behind it, biodegradation. Again, not a whole lot of people understand biodegradation, but there's definitely a reason why Monkey Glove is doing what it is doing. Monkey Gloves work in today's primary managed waste system. This eliminates the glove as a pollutant and ensures clean energy recovery in the process. It didn't say anything about biodegradation or anything about the science. It's just keeping with the facts of what is actually occurring. And this is a platform that you can definitely stand on with confidence and assurance that what is being done is the right thing to do uh, to eliminate this glove as a pollutant and ensure the highest return value as possible. Okay, well that concludes our webinar today on Green Monkey. Um, if there's any other questions, you can definitely send them in uh, to us to answer. We will be sending out uh, a video link uh, that you can uh, review as well. Uh, thanks again for Paul and Don for helping us present today. We really appreciate it, and we're just really excited to launch a Screen Monkey, and it'll be available sh shortly. So thanks all for joining today.